All right, this video is continuing right where I left off in the previous video. It's using the same document, part 015, matrix, funks, tables, sort. And this time we're in the third section. We're gonna talk about sorting. Let me run this first sorting section right here, control enter. Here I create matrix A right here. I do not display it out. I use a semicolon to suppress my output. Some of these semicolons are actually a little redundant, but sometimes I just get in the habit of putting them in there. But in any case, here's matrix A. I don't display it out. I display out a sorted. So sort is a built-in MATLAB function. Sort parentheses A is gonna sort my matrix. And this is the sorted output. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is that every single column was sorted separately. This is a pattern that MATLAB follows. Most, if not all, of the MATLAB functions operate on each column separately. So the values in the first column were all sorted independent of what shared a row with them, right? Nine, negative one, and zero used to share a row, but now they're kind of all over the place. Now, what happens in my code when I then go on and display A? Is it sorted or is it not? Well, the answer is no, it is not sorted. It is the original A. I emphasized this in the previous video and I want to emphasize it again. A is not going to change unless you use its name and then an equal sign and set it equal to new information, a new value. Scrolling on down, never assume that a function changes the original data. In a lot of programming languages, it does, but MATLAB, we do not want to have that assumption. All right. Our functions, we do not assume they have side effects. We assume that they return a new result. So if you do want to sort A and you want it to save over top of the original and replace the original, how do you do that? Well, very similar code to what I had in the previous section, except instead of just sort A by itself, we have A equals sort A. So when I run this section here, and I display out A, after setting A equal to the result of sorting it, now A itself has been modified. Now A is sorted. It's this new data right here, right? The nine is at the bottom. It's sorted ascending, I should mention, from low to high and every column is sorted separately. Continuing on down, I'm gonna run this section, control enter. Now, a lot of times when we're sorting our data, we don't actually wanna sort all of the columns separately, right? Like what if we've got some information and like in one column, it's the person's name and in the second column, it's their age and the third column, it's like uh, how many credit hours they have or whatever, right? We don't wanna sort that data column independent, because then one person's name might get associated with somebody else's credit hours and somebody else's age, and it would be all confusing. So a lot of times we want to sort keeping all the rows together and just sort by a particular column. So here's how to do that. Now, first thing I do is I create A and I display it out. So there's my original. Scrolling down in the editor just a little bit, keeping the command window as it is. Suppose I want to sort by column two ascending without breaking up or splitting up the row values. I just use a different function. It's sort rows instead of sort, and then parentheses, what do I want to sort? Which matrix? Matrix A, comma, which column do I want to sort based on? Column two. Just, I chose two arbitrarily. So here's my result. Remember when I was saying before, you know, well, we want to keep, suppose we want to keep the nine, negative one, and zero together. They still are together, but they're at the top instead of second from last because the negative one is the smallest value and we're sorting by default ascending from low to high. Likewise, you know, the four, the five, and the six were together, they stay together when we use sort rows. I am putting the result into a different variable, a new variable named sorted A, so I'm not modifying the original. I'm just creating a copy that is sorted and I'm putting it in this new variable name so that I can access both the original and the new version. Now, suppose you don't want to sort ascending. Suppose you want to sort descending. Well, good news, it's super easy. You just do basically the exact same thing. You want to sort by column two descending. You just put a little negative in front of the two. And scrolling down slightly in the command window, we see there's the result. So now the nine negative one zero is on the bottom because we sorted by the middle column. And so small is at the bottom and big is at the top. All of this code works exactly the same in octave. An alternative to using the negative here is to instead do like comma desc in apostrophes. That will also sort by column two descending instead of ascending. This does not work in octave, but the negative does. 
So just, you know, some alternatives there. It might be easier to remember that you sorted it descending. You could also just add a comment to remind yourself that you sorted descending, or you could use this. But again, this right here that I have, same as just putting the negative here. The negative two, so sort by second column descending, does work in octave. The DESC does not. And that's just our basic introduction to sorting, so quick video on that one. We're going to move on to the next document in the folder for the next video, but I'll remind you that in the next one. Bye, folks.